Pasadena, California, and that's uh, Mabel, and she is oh, somewhere right in, in Indiana. Mabel does traffic for us when we have traffic, but we've never had any traffic, so she's yet to do her first report, but she's standing right. by, but she's, stand by. Nobody can accuse us of not being prepared. Mabel is ready to go at a moment's notice should uh, things get backed up here in beautiful uh, Esperance, at the home of the Esperance uh, Media Studios, uh, where I'm doing the show from. <laughs> Esperanza Media Studios, Esperanza. downtown. Not Esperanza, Esperance. Esperance, okay. Esperanza, I stand corrected. singular, not Esperanza as in singular female. And that implies an entirely different language. Well, uh, I think it's, it all goes back to Spanish, which probably goes back to Greek, which probably goes back to the Romance languages. Well, uh, so, Romance languages go back to Latin. Yeah, that goes back to Latin, where you have, uh, you know, on the other side, uh, like with... Uh, you know, the kind of Cyrillic letter languages like, uh, you know, Russian and Ukrainian and, you know, and, and all those. May, may, may the twine never meet. Well, I think they've met and they've gone come apart and they've met and they've come apart. And they're in a the moment of now uh, deciding whether they're going to meet or come apart. And actually not they are deciding, but he is deciding whether they want to meet yeah. or come apart. Well, before I ask you a serious question, I have to say this is Kristen's birthday, so we're celebrating today. We're wishing her a happy birthday, and I wanted to get that out of the way. My lovely oh, wife, I love you. Thank you, Kristen. Happy birthday, Kristen, a woman who always leaves me a little note on Facebook saying, oh, Vinny, we love you. You know, it just brightens, she, she brightens up your day, Kristen. She means it. Anyway. Yeah, she, no, she, you know, she's one of the true people that I have met in my life that, you know, sometimes you go, somebody saying they love you, slapping you on the back, and they're, you know, they're... Yeah, right. Okay. Thank you. They see they seem insincere. Yeah. Even, even um, trying not to. Always since I know I've known her, and it's 40 years now, um, is been nothing but sincere and helpful. And uh, Michael, you uh you know, I would say that you hit over your weight in this oh, one, yeah. but so, um but it was you know, it was, it was, kind it was of the it same was, way. So <laughs> it was a surprise law, it was a surprise long ball, despite my record. Yeah, that's uh <laughs> We get lucky in life every once in a while, and you certainly uh, have done well in that area, as opposed to me, who, although have met three great women and married them, uh, it hasn't stuck in the same way. So yeah. I, uh, you know, th the fact that you can, you guys can make that work uh, is always a source of amazement and um, education for me, because I figure I'm going to, you know, maybe go around one more time and you know, with the, with that, and, and it's always good to to see people that you can take examples from, and she's one of them. She's one of those people that you look at and you say, "Boy, I, I would like to have that kind of sincerity, that kind of um, uh, caring, love." You know, all that, all the stuff that goes along with that in somebody that you're, you know, have to look at every day. You have to. You have to look at them. You can't not look unless you're a traveling salesman. And we all know how that goes. <laughs> uh, well, farmer, happy birthday. Which, 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 which brings to, to mind the farmer's daughter, but I won't get into that. Yeah, I, no. yeah, no, I, I, I didn't want to go there. That's why I didn't say unless you're the farmer's, you know. Um, my, serious, my serious question to you, Vinny, is what event in what place on the world in, in what period of time is going to draw us into this war? Well, it seems it's, like we're getting closer. Closer and closer, doesn't it? Yes. Uh, I mean, I, you know, listen, I sincerely hope for the sake of the world that that doesn't happen. But uh, I, I, as I've said from the start, uh, Poland is the igniter of World War III. If they go over the line in Poland, whether it's intentional or not intentional, if one NATO life is lost in Poland, if one convoy or airfield is attacked, you have no other choice. And I don't think we have enough people there yet. We, we're going to have to beef up that line. Well, you know, I, I got to tell you, Michael, that it doesn't seem to me that if we get in a shooting war with Russia, the people is going to be the issue. No, it'll be our our stuff against their stuff. Yeah, yeah. 
um, because- Well, then we need more stuff. On a people basis, I mean, we can take them out, you know, pretty easily. I mean, if it's people to people, we have, I don't know, they have, I don't know if they, they have 200 million people in, in all of Russia, uh, Russia we're talking about now. But they don't have a, but they don't have a very good army. And, and yeah, and their army seems like it wants to go home every day. <laughs> like, wait, we, you were told us this was a nine to five. You said, you said. You said. You, you said. said. This was nine to five. I specifically remember uh, when you signed me up. So you may have to work some overtime if we have to poison somebody in London. Some weekends required for traveling. Or if we have to pull off, uh, pull somebody off of a plane or something like that, or shoot a plane out of the sky, you may have to work a couple hours overtime on those nights. But other than that, nine and to you, five. Yeah, and you said we could beat up demonstrators, but these demonstrators don't like to be beaten up. They don't care well, for these it. The problem here is just there's many, many more of them than <laughs> there is of us. Did you see the video? I know you probably did because you're watching the war like I am. Uh, the Russians take this town in the east near Mariupol and they, they, they hold a meeting in the middle of town. They, they go to the square with their tanks and their, and, their, and their guns and their troops. And the people of the town turn out and outnumber them and jeer them. You this, you that, you punks, you, you screwballs. Le leveling. And they had the, 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 the soldiers had to shoot rifles into the air to calm the crowd down. The crowd was unarmed, but the soldiers got the message. And the message was, you think you're here? You're not here. Just turn your back. The housewives of this town will tear you to pieces. Yeah. It, I, listen, if, if nothing else, nothing else, the example of the Ukrainian people, um, I mean, it, it, it brings tears to my eyes. That's why we're going to have to get in. It brings, it brings us, me, to a point when I look at it, I throw stuff at the TV. Yeah. And I, 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 I curse the Russians. And I, you know, and I, 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 I mean, there's nothing else you can really do. I mean, what the hell else is a, you know, 66-year-old guy going to do sitting on his fat ass in the living room? But except, you know, try to support the, the people of Ukraine any possible way you can, whether it be just putting a flag up or um, letting them know uh, through Facebook that you support them, uh, that there are many people around this world that it's it really is turning into Putin against the world. And that the world is on this. The problem is, is that that's not going to help out when you're carrying mom down the stairs uh, after they just bombed the top floor of your house. Doesn't help much at all. Hey, the people in Georgia are with us. Come on, yeah. mom. Yeah, and unfortunately that doesn't do a lot for you. So I think that President Biden and his advisors are going to be faced with the harsh reality of uh, you tell Putin he's got, you know, 10 minutes <laughs> to make yeah, an announcement. Give, give him you 10 minutes. Even, you know, and and... If he doesn't, um, we're going to march. We're going to start marching people across the border. I think, well, the first thing you'll find is rockets taking out their line of defense, rockets taking out their supply. You know, they can it'd be so easy to cut them off. They have such terrible times. You know how much they advanced? They didn't even advance two miles this oh, weekend. The yeah, whole weekend, they couldn't the, get two miles. Michael, I don't even think it's it's the rockets in Ukraine that scare me one bit or that that give me pause is the fact that if you do this, if you go in there and you use yeah. your strongest artillery without going nuclear, you're still going to have Putin who is already said that he has no qualm in pushing the button. Then, and to well, quote well, the great Harry Maguire, if the button is pushed, there's no running away. Well, that's an accurate quote of Barry Maguire. However, it seems like standing by and waiting for whatever is inevitable is, is, is fast not becoming an option. It's quickly disappearing as a position that we can take and defend. Now, Zelensky is going to address Congress on Wednesday, day after tomorrow.
I hope that there's something left of Kiev between now and then so that he has a chance to make that address. But his question should be, are you people in the government of the United States comfortable? Are you in your new suit? Are your shoes shined? Is your family safe? Do you know where you're going for lunch? Is your, is, is your existence something you can refer to in a diary and find out what you're doing at two o'clock? Or are you living in a basement? Have you been separated from your family? All your clothes, your belongings, your record collection and your cat missing. Is everything that you have that made, that made up your life been cut away from you and all you have is one bag and no idea where you're gonna be eating tomorrow. Decide which one is you. I know which one my people are living through. And I thought we were allies. So I'm asking a big, a big favor of yours from you. Help us. And don't you say you're gonna send jets, send them. Don't you say you're gonna uh, interfere and, and stop the Russians, stop them. And now it's possible that Joe Biden is right and that means World War III. So give me an alternative, Joe. And I know he'd love to have one. If he had one, he'd give it to me now. And yeah. it got complicated over the weekend, Vinny, when Russia asked who for help. Who did they ask? Well, uh, yeah, they, they talked to China and they said, listen, we need some uh, help need here. Some stuff. And, and the stupidest thing China could ever do, unless they really feel that they are on a footing right now to invade the United States yep. uh, or, or, or not even the United States. All they got to do is go, you know, go take Taiwan, figure that this is the right part, right time to, uh, to, to take back the claim that they've been squawking about. Well, if they or, wanted to get, if they wanted to get much bigger, that would be the direction to go. If they wanted to get smaller and calm down, they're going to have to go a different direction. Well, and Xi, President Xi of China, has to pretty much make a decision here. Do you risk? Do you because you risk the United States cutting you off? Now, what does United States cutting you off mean? That changes the economy of the world. Right. That says that whole thing that we built up over the last 20, 25 years of let's keep you occupied with making money uh, as opposed to building up your military. So maybe you don't have exactly what we have here in the United States in a democracy, but your people are comfortable at least. There's there are many, 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 many less human rights uh, uh, violations and things like that. They still exist. I don't think we're naive and, and don't believe that the Chinese uh, don't still play their games. But then again, I don't think we believe that the United States doesn't play its games either. You know, we're all bozos here on this bus. But the um, they run an economic risk. And it seems that the Chinese countries in that sphere of influence really values that economic peak component of their lives much more than the Russians do. And it's, it's the reason that they've uh, ascended to a world power, not because of their army, but because of their business and their acumen and that's right, their trade. And you they, know what, it's an interesting thing that it's, it's like a flashback to a story that's old, you say that can't be right. But the Foxconn, C-O-N-N -N company, which is a, uh, an American consortium making computer parts in China and, and all, this, uh, all of its cities nearby have been locked down. They have another COVID outbreak in China. Yeah. And it's, I... a big, it's a big one. And by the way, this, this opens the door to another variant of COVID, which is already surfacing around the world. So if you think we're through with one thing, just be, we can't put, it, we can't put the uh, pandemic to bed quite yet until we find out more about this. But that's the Ch China's idea of total lockdown has not worked. As, as of course, our ideas of how to control the virus hasn't worked either. Yeah. But but uh, that, mean, that's that's something that they're facing now in major cities. 
that we that, that, that is now off our radar. What, what, what would you say if Seattle had a big outbreak all of a sudden? Los Angeles had a big outbreak. What would, what would we think? What, what, what would the backtrack like that be? It'd be so depressing to go back. Well, what, what would our, not only that, what, would, what actions would we have to take? How much of our military would we have to isolate? If you had a, a major outbreak, let's hear it, let's say down yeah. here at the Joint Base uh, uh, Lewis. Lewis down here. Suppose you had, you know, which is a stepping off point for troops on the Pacific coast. What would happen if you had a major outbreak down there and you, I mean, you're going to put COVID sick troops into a uh, transport and send them over there. That ain't going to work. Give them shots. I mean, what are you going to do? So I'm surprised. I'm surprised that the Russian troops haven't had outbreaks and of course they may, but we would well, never know yeah. about it. Think they're going to tell you? Um, yeah, I mean, at this point, you do wonder why that you haven't heard anything. Has COVID just been eradicated from the Russian um, playbook? Do they not have it anymore over there? Do they get everybody vaccinated in time? I, I doubt that. They, in yeah. fact, Obama's got it. Now it's Putin's turn. Hey, Vladimir, breathe deep. Breathe deep the gathering gloom. One of the and, uh, and um, go ahead. Might I just uh, say in that that we here in the United States here's the, the question that I think we here in the United States is the same question that I, I said at the outset of this war. Do we have the stomach to watch American flag draped coffins flying back on a daily basis? From Ukraine. From Ukraine, from the middle of, of the, from the other side of the world. Do we have the stomach for that? Do we have, will we um, do that? How will that affect us as a country uh, right after we've seen non-flag draped and flag draped coffins uh, being unloaded on us every night on the nightly news because of COVID? Well, there's... There's the version where we say, screw it. We know it's dangerous, but we've watched long enough. We're going in. We're, in a, we're, we're, we're sending rockets. We're doing the air, air control. There'll be a no-fly zone. American jets will patrol the whole area. Anything in the air will be shot down. Or more likely, a blunder. Missiles go into Poland, hit a city, hit a laundromat. Uh, missiles from Odessa go into Moldova, Moldova. Sorry. Moldova, yes. And to, not only do you have to remember to take the eye out, but you have to remember how to pronounce old. it at the same time. It's it's drop the eye and just called it Smith or Jones or something like that. They used to call it that, but Biff Biff Moldova bought the rights and it became his country. I uh, you know I listen I, uh, I I applaud them for having an, an easy to spell name, but. Again, Mikey, we're, uh, you know, we're dealing in. And that's one of those borderline countries that's not a member of NATO, but is a very close to Odessa. And they're willing 30, to help out. Yeah, and they're helping out, especially with the, with the uh, refugees. 25,000, what is it? 25,000 through one port every day, through one, just one border crossing. Yep. 25,000 people. That's uh, a small town. But now, Vinny, you and your family can't get out of a variety of cities to get the train to go anywhere. There are no trains. Right. You can't get out of that city walking because walking out of that city would be a de would be signing your own death warrant. But people are doing it. Pe people are, are going in bunches, and I guess they're figuring, well, you know, if, if uh, the kids make it, all the better. That's, um, you know, I mean, it's only women and children at this point. You don't see uh, many men, uh, except if they're, you know, very old or infirm or something like that. But the men are staying back and fighting. Yeah. I was watching an interview with a woman uh, this morning on CNN who had spoken about, uh, you know, her kids think this is the second time she's moved in uh, the last couple of days. And her kids think it's an adventure. 
uh, maybe not 100% realizing the, the danger that they're in. And why would you tell the kids? Uh, you know, uh, I think everybody must know. Plus, you can hear the you can hear the explosions. Yeah, I think I think you know, but I, I think you would frame it up for them is that we're going on this. Uh, you know, we got to get out of here. But I don't know if you, you show them the horrors. I'm sure they must just walk down the road or drive down the road and see bodies laid out and have to, you know, try to figure out how to tell that to your kid. Uh, oh, Uncle Vladimir is not, uh, and not, not Voldemir, but Vladimir is uh, not making a lot of friends there. We're waiting for some person close to Putin to do the right thing, to stop him before it gets any further. But I don't think that person exists because he doesn't allow that person to be that close to him, ever. Well, he certainly has increased the size of his Broyhill, hasn't he? You know, I mean, well, that the, the 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 thoughts that he wanted everyone to be thinking about Vladimir Putin are now being thought, but it's not what he thought it was going to be. Careful what you ask for, unintended consequences. Yeah, and in that lies maybe the saving grace. I don't know. Maybe the the one thing that that maybe you have going for you is that he got he stuck his foot into a, a pond to cool off his feet, and now he finds that there are a number of piranhas and alligators in that it's, pond. It's, and and snapping turtles. A, to a, a toe. I love the snapping turtle because your toe will be gone in a hurry. Yeah, yeah. I mean, now, does he say that that's okay because I'm going to die soon anyway? So I don't who cares? Know. Apparently so he's... The finish he's, line? Or he's, if, uh, if I'm dead, I'm not going to hear them applaud me. I'm well, you know, he, he's, me. he's very close to the who cares point of view. Who cares? Yeah. Yeah. Come and get me. You haven't stopped me. You haven't told me anything that I didn't know. You haven't scared me. You haven't tried to stop me. You don't talk to me. I'm not talking to you. Screw you people. I'm on my way and I'm not done yet. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you are, you're very close to that where he's, uh, you know, he thinks he can really, you know, leave a mark on the world and it would be a large hole where once the city stood. That's why I wish these anchors would stop, stop asking questions of what do you think he's really thinking? What's his state of mind? Well, bloody hell has been fighting you for 19 days. If, if this, if this was the 19th round and you still can't figure out you're in a fight, then you have no idea what you're talking about. You don't, you don't need to be an anchor. Have somebody write questions for you. If that's what you think is a sensible question, this 19 days into it. Is he mad? Is he, is he out of his mind? Is he really upset over something? Well, yeah, I mean, you, you, you have people that uh, in these anchor chairs and producer chairs who are, uh, you know, faced with much longer of a period than they ever thought they were going to have to question people. <laughs> <laughs> they so haven't got now, anything to ask. Bill questions are, you know, basically, is he going to blow us all up? Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, the other one is predict how this is going to end. <laughs> yeah, would you please predict? And also give me the final four in the March Madness. Yeah, when I saw, <laughs> you know, <laughs> when, when, when I saw some uh, some reporter from uh, from uh, a, a local radio station ask the, uh, the baseball player who was just back in camp what he thought of the uh, – of the situation in Ukraine, I said, "By my, we are out of out of sports questions here, aren't we?" <laughs> Can you name any of the pitchers and catchers on your team? Well, not yet. We're going to meet soon. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna have. Uh, I got cue cards here. I wrote them all down. Uh, and as we know, the people who are on our team may not be the people who will be there uh, at ten o'clock or at eight o'clock this morning when we take yeah. the field. Or nine o'clock, I think it is. Frankly, Biff, I don't know anybody on our team, so we'll have to get to we'll have to get to know one another. Yeah, they they seem here to use that same system they have in Ukraine. Is uh, you know we, we don't quite know who's here, but they're here and they have bats and they're ready. It's like first grade where you shake hands with your neighbor, reach out and take a take a hand, shake hands, meet yeah, your short hands. meet your shortstop. Who the hell are you? Uh, wear a name tag. Oh, well, I have one on my back. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that'll do. Turn around. Turn around so we know who you are. 
Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a time of, you know, that kind of getting to know you process in, in baseball because they're, uh, they're this morning, uh, you know, for the first time out on the field, although many of them have been there for a while, have been down in Arizona or in Florida, depending on the case. And um, so we'll see what happens. I, uh, it's, <clears throat> it, you know, they're going to play their first game here on Friday. I mean, the Mariners, not here in um, Seattle, but they'll play their first game Friday. They're going to play the charity game that they usually pay, play. So that's good. They're hoping that the team looks different by Friday uh, because they are hell-bent on spending some money and bringing in uh, another quality free agent. Have they signed anybody? Any acquisitions? I, I know the I Giants. Saw Giants, at, Giants at just o'clock this morning. Yeah, Giants just picked up a catcher that they released. Yeah, we're they, they're clearing roster spots right now. Mm -hmm. So I always take that as a good sign. Because yeah, they need some. They need. They're going to put somebody in there. Right. Uh, you know, uh, Chris Bryant seems to be the object de affection. Uh, He seems to be the flavor, the one that uh, the fans want, certainly. Where would they play him, third or left, or both? Third, probably, and maybe a, a bit of a, a hybrid. Uh, you know, they are certainly looking for bench depth. I mean, if they're serious now about competing, which uh, they should be because they have, you know, they went out and they got a Cy Young award-winning pitcher, the current Cy Young award winner. Uh, and Rob, uh, Robbie Ray. So, I mean, I mean, they have some pitching. They could use a, another starter because you can never, ever have ever, enough. Ever, pitching. ever, ever. You can't have enough. And, and of course, they have the opportunity to be a playoff team because every team in the American League is going to be a playoff team with the new system. Right. Under the new system, I mean, it, it's, it's essentially they've just created a second season. They just keep playing. Who? The same guys. You, yeah, you, you've you've seen same. them all before. Yeah, same same guys. Just stay there. Don't even leave the city. Stick around. No. Matter of fact, here's our new plan to save money. We're going to ship the uniforms, not the players. So we're just going to do like we do with the bad boys. You know, every city, they grab a couple of bad boys in the squad. They dress them up in their uniforms, and they got a couple of bad boys they don't have to travel to. They don't have to go anywhere. Right. In baseball, that's what they're going to do. They're going to take two uh, traveling people with the team, dress them up as bad boys. And Who's going to know? You're in. Why spend that money to travel these people? No, it makes economic sense to do it your way. And then the institution of the Smokey Burgess rule, which I'm going to miss so much because Smokey never, never ever got to second base in his entire career, I don't believe, except uh, passing by on a, in his rare home run. Smokey never doubled anywhere. He always just turned turned wide at first and hung on. Yeah, it's uh, well, you know, go back and look at Smokey's body construction, and you'll plainly see that he was a man who could not be stopped. <laughs> <laughs> hard to hard to start, but impossible to stop. Yeah, you get you get in front of him. <laughs> you get in front of him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, Smokey, a nice guy and everything, but you know, it took him a half a block to put the brakes on. So understandable, you know, if I don't want to have my, uh, my, I scrotum him, not clear past my belt buckle. I probably, mm. I know just the, the sound of it sounds. That's going to smart. That's yeah, definitely going to. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's going to, yeah. That's going to hurt. I'd say uh, that you'd experience want, a stab of pain. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah. And, and a few other things too, <laughs> the uncontrollable bruising. And uh, a walk that would make you a charter member of the Hopalong Cassidy Club, which is the way Smokey walked all along. He had he had a wide. He approach. had yeah he had that kind of wide. Uh, hey Hopalong Cassidy, how you doing? <laughs> 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 hey, was Smokey, how you doing? How you doing? <laughs> Although you know with, with Smokey, now I haven't looked up where he is from, but I would think that. He would be more like a, how y'all doing? <laughs> you know, that's funny. I don't know where Smokey was from. I don't know what his hometown is. 
the the information is easily attainable. I mean, information is at our fingertips. While you're looking that up, I, I want to give a standing ovation to Dolly Parton, who told the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame that it was interesting, and she thanked them, but it was too early to go into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, and she's taken her name out of the nomination list for two reasons. The ones she gave and the fact that Dolly Parton has never had a rock and roll record or a rock and roll hit or a rock and roll tour, or she's done wonderful things for rock and roll t-shirts. But in terms of actually her career, I don't think we can call Dolly Parton a rock and roller or even a folk artist. She's a country girl. She's a country artist and, 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 and a very important one, but certainly does not What's the point of putting Dolly Parton in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? It's Especially like when you don't Hank have Hank Williams in there. Yeah, first you things know? first. Uh, I mean, again, I will, uh, you know, repeat, repeat, repeat that the legitimacy of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame um, escapes me when you don't put people like Neil Sedaka, who was uh, along with Carol King and and so many other writers of that era responsible for most of the rock and roll that we saw in, uh, in 58, 59, 60, 61, 62. He was a creator. He made stuff. He wrote songs like they were going out of style. And, uh, and they never did. Songs turns out, turns... They weren't going out of style. <laughs> well, the songs have mutated, that's for sure. But you still need one if you want to be a hit, a hit singer. Right. And also came back with a number of, of hits in the late 60s, early 70s. Uh, had, a, had a, you know, a second, much like Paul Anka did. Yeah, Elton uh, John signed him to Rocket Records, right? Yeah, Elton John signed him to Rocket in his uh, career, no pun intended, took off once again as a, a soft rock artist. Um, but Certainly one of the people that laid the, the cornerstones of the Rock and Roll Hall of, Hall of Fame, of the Rock and Roll uh, experience. And Is he, you know he must be, Hall of Fame? He must be in the Songwriters Hall of Fame, yes? I would have to think so, yeah. I mean, I couldn't imagine that he wouldn't be. Uh, but, you know, who knows? By the way, Smokey Burgess is from... Caroline, North Carolina. Okay, Smokey. Uh, exactly where I, I thought he would be from uh, and died in uh, 1991 in Asheville, North Carolina, one of the uh, un, unknown gems of the South these days, Asheville. Yes, 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 yes. Great, it's college, great, college town, great, right? Yeah, great little town, great. It's... Uh, kind of the end of the Blue Ridge Parkway, the southern end, and uh, just a spectacular little town. It's probably, the, I, I would almost say it's the Greenwich Village of the South. Do they have Smokey's height and weight there? I don't know if they do. I don't know. I didn't notice it when I was there a couple of years ago. Um, and I'd be happy to go back and look. Matter of fact, I would, uh, I haven't, uh, driven the tail of the dragon in a long time, so I would uh, I'd love to go check it out. Well, they probably have a Smoky Burgess Field there somewhere in town, and at Smoky Burgess Field, there is a statue of Smoky at second base. I uh, at second base must make it difficult for the uh, for the players to run around him. Oh yeah, it's like having a tree in left field. Yeah, yeah, just... uh, or a railroad. Uh... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that you have to stop play and let the train go by <laughs> let the train go by or but if you hit a ball and lands in the train and goes out of town you, you get it's a, credit for the, you, it's a home run uh, you got to make it a home run if you can hit a moving train with a baseball or with a batted ball you should get all the credit you deserve <laughs> put it in the cold put it in the cold car and kiss it goodbye you know we forget when ballparks had those kinds of quirks oh yeah you know, um i remember a couple of years ago I went to uh, watch my godson's game in Sacramento and the ballpark uh, didn't have a train that ran through the outfield, but from the right field end of the regular seats and then around some bleachers, there was a train that came that went this way. So, and it was a, a, an antique train 
was like a train ride because I think they were down the block from the um, California Railway Museum. Mm-hmm. And so you would look and, and all of a sudden you'd be sitting there watching him here, toot, toot, toot. <laughs> it would come a steam powered locomotive out of right center <laughs> and tucked behind the stands. I like that. Very cool. It was it was very cool. I have a video of it somewhere in my on my Facebook stuff. I remember I was so impressed with it that I just oh, just sat there with the camera. You know, I like it. When, I like it when there are special ground rules. Now, if the goat gets your ball, it's in play. So you got to chase that goat. I'm telling you, get get the ball because he'll take it. I know him. Oh yeah, he'll take it. He'll run, and you don't see a goat run too much. But he's he's he can move when he wants to. Old Solly will uh, will pick it up and run with it. For Couldn't all we just give words. him a double? You know, I've thought I've tried to change that rule so many times. Just give him a double, but nope, it's in play. So chase the goat. Chase the goat. And if you have to get into his stomach to uh, retrieve the ball, well, you know, there's two ways you can go on that. <laughs> You'll remember this, and I don't think it happens much anymore because the ballparks are so don't don't avail themselves of this kind of conversation. But the umpire meets with the managers at home plate, whoever brings the line of card, and they start pointing. Now, if the ball goes here, the ball goes there, if the ball goes here, if the ball, da, 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 da. and they don't they, they don't do that very much anymore, if ever. Ground rules. Well, they do it. At, I think they still do it at the beginning of each series. Now, now I'll have to check to see if that's so, if it's, you know, a weekend series, the Friday night game, one of those one of those games, usually the first game of the series, they have to explain the ground rules to the opposing manager. I be, I believe that that still happens in that particular game. But okay. I remember when we were kids; they it seemed like they would do it for every game. Yeah, but guys drank a lot more then. And they forget. I forget what happens if it goes in there. <laughs> Onesie, twosy, bouncy. What is that there, Harry? <laughs> and here's the thing. We don't have an outfield fence, okay? I'm sorry. The guy who built our stadium had never seen a baseball game before. He had no idea that the fence was important. So we just drew a line on the wall. It's above the line. And you just go, okay, you don't have a fence, but you, but you have a line on the wall. So you knew that you needed a fence, but you still didn't build one. So we're going to find you every day that you play without a fence. And we start today, $100,000 a day fine to, the, to, to, every, to every team that does not have a fence in baseball. No more lines on the wall. Wow. Well, it was a time when baseball stadiums were built like that. Uh, they didn't have lines. If you, uh, you know, up until I, I, I think it might have even been as late as the 30s. There were still ballparks that didn't have an outfield wall. And, you know, if a, from what I understand, I mean, I wasn't there before my time, uh, that if a guy hit a long fly ball to right field, that the uh, right field crowd would start moving in. <laughs> I like that idea. That would be the fielders would look and go, I'm not running into that crowd. No, it's called the Philadelphia shrink. All right. <laughs> It's out of here. <laughs> um, but many uh, stadiums, including uh, Forbes in Pittsburgh, and um, certainly uh, I know the Polo Grounds that had it at one time. I remember reading that in the book. Uh, and they might have been, I don't know if they were the first stadium to put up a wall out there. I think that. I don't. I forget which one that was uh, that put up a wall. Might have been um, Red Legs Field in Cincinnati. Whoa! What was the name of it? Red Legs Field. Yeah, I think that was uh, where they played before Crosley. Now, do you remember? My father explained this to me once, but I can't remember the dates. Uh, and I think I have it right. The Cincinnati Reds had a controversial name when the when the uh, anti communists way right, hit, right, hit the United right. States. And they changed their name to the Red Legs, correct? Right. Well, they were the Red Legs very early on in their existence. And um, I, I believe in the, uh, you know, the 1860s, they World, were the Red World, Stockings World. of the Red Legs. And then they got away from it and just went with the Reds. And then, yeah, when the, the whole Joe McCarthy scare uh, stuff was going on, uh, the uh, owner... 
I'm trying to remember his name now. Was it DeWitt? Uh, I think it might have been DeWitt who owned the team at the time, and he was, I believe, a staunch Republican and didn't want anything to do with the name Reg because it could be associated with communists. So they pulled the name off, and all and, of the... Uh, but now a guy like Carlson Spolpucka can, uh, can just call the good guys the thugs and associate himself nightly on his television show with the bad guys with no... With no um, no backlash. He's a he's he's a pro communist, uh, all Putin killer is what he's amount uh, what he amounts to. We haven't ruined him yet, have we? We we, we haven't had him taken off the air. Our all powering little broadcast here. We haven't been able to. Uh, to we, we're uh, e we're him eating away. Rogan off to the land of uh, inflated ego. We are we are gradually but hardly noticeably. Uh, eating away at his foundation of support. Carlson Spopakia will soon uh, feel the wrath of the Mikey and Vinny influence. Wow. Well, takes one is, you know, listen, there's, there's a little, there's a flavor, as Howard Johnson once said, there's a flavor for everybody out there, and I got 32 <laughs> of them. Uh, <laughs> also, you can stay here all night if you want. Get a room. Get a room. Have ice cream sent up. Have ice cream. Stick around. Have some fun. Uh, I, yeah, yeah. I mean, you have to be educated when you consume media. If you're not, you are, at the very least, uh, running the chance of opening up your mouth, not knowing what you're talking about. Oh, that happens in America. I've heard that, yeah. Um, and at worst, you run the risk of inflicting harm on other people because you open your mouth and you don't know what you're talking about. And these are uh, and, still... And remember, he's, do airwaves to he's me, doing right? it just for the money. He's a showman. Right. He's just a comedian without jokes. He's just there to make the dough. He's just there to sell... Um, Washing powder and yogurt. Oh, Mikey, 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 Carson Spolpaka. What, what a, yeah. I remember, the, I remember the morning you came up with that name. <laughs> well, I couldn't, I, I, you I couldn't, couldn't think of Tucker Carlson and you just went Carlson Spolpaka. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mikey, the good thing is it wasn't that long ago. So that says nothing for your long term memory. <laughs> <laughs> no. I have, I, have, I, I don't, I don't brag on my memory. But I find it um, exhilarating that uh, you, you uh, can remember anything because I have trouble. I, you know, I walk out to the kitchen and say, "The hell did I come out here for?" What am I? Am I? Well, I always walk to the kitchen, and when I get there, I say, "Am I really here?" Is this really where you want me? <laughs> Is this where, yeah. Now what? Yes, God, please point me in the direction that you'd like to see me go in and tell me why I'm going there and we'll be okay. I, and I, I, would, I would like to know why I'm going. Yes, please. Yes, uh, because it seems like I could remember one or the other, but both of them, dear Lord, uh, throws a little bit of, the, of, a, of a roadblock in there for me. And something, something tells me I came out to the kitchen for pastrami, but there is no pastrami here. So I'm going to have to go to the store. Why would I go to the kitchen if there's no pastrami? I haven't gone to the kitchen for pastrami since uh, 1993, I think, or four. <laughs> you like to deal directly with a, with a professional provider? Right. I, I, and, and I was lucky enough that, uh, you know, when you went there, there was usually some kind of cut of decent pastrami somewhere in the neighborhood. Now, this week, we will be going for corned beef. Ooh. OK, but that's right. We're getting close, is, aren't we? It is St. Patty's Day. And um, what is that? Today's the uh, 14th. For today's so the 14th. So, well, here it comes. Uh, I have uh, told a couple of my friends that I would like to go out for Thanks, uh, for Thanksgiving. Let's for St. Patty's Day this year. Um, Little St. Patty's nosh. What What do you have on your menu? Uh, well, it depends on where I am. I may actually have to go down to um, Portland. Whoa! What? Why? Uh, I uh, 
I want to go watch Gonzaga. The Zags, number the one. Zags number in one. The first round of the uh, NCAA, and I may actually be able to get uh, some gainful employment doing that. Excellent, Vinny. Good job. And by the way, you're, you're watching the right team. Uh, yeah, I think, uh, you know, there's a lot of traps there for the Zags, as they're always are when you're a number one overall seed, but uh, it's certainly one of them is not lack of experience. These guys know what it's like to be there. Uh, their coaches, uh, and I know some people, uh, you know, he had a, the DUI at the beginning of the year and so on and so forth. But that was ugly. That was ugly. I, I find Mark Few to be a great story and a yeah. great guy and uh, somebody you can root for and somebody that you can um, – you know, get behind him and his team. And get a goddamn driver, for crying out loud, coach. Get a driver. Yeah, it, it always befuddles me how these people who, you know, get a couple of snifters under their belt decide mm. that it's a good idea. You know, I'm only going a block. I'm only going two blocks. I'm only going here. I'm only going to the 7-Eleven to get some Pepto-Bismol. Uh, you know, how they can jump into their cars and it's almost like you put sending up the bat signal to cops. Yeah, drive themselves right onto the front page. Yeah. Oh, you're the guy. You're, you're the guy that arrested. Uh, yeah. Well, we got it. We got it. We're holding page one for you, pal. Yeah. You know, this, this is Spokane. This is not. <laughs> this is not a place that uh, make you know makes a lot of news. Uh, so, we'd be happy to put this story on the front page of the paper. Can we get a smiling picture, picture of smiling, or one, or and contrast it with this booking photo? <laughs> I don't know, Mikey. I, I, I think the booking photos are always more effective. They, they, they do catch you at that interesting time in your life. Yeah, yeah. And uh, luckily, um, the uh, um, Spokesman Review uh, has a uh, you know, a good a roto graveur machine. Uh, that, uh, yeah, a roto graveur that uh, takes those uh, pictures and slaps them right on the front page for you. Oh, yeah. No charge. And they even still have an editor who stands up at the front of his office and says, hold the presses. <laughs> Copy boy. Copy boy. And uh, James Olson comes up and grabs the copy and runs down the room, which is stupid because it just could punch it in. Yeah. Well, but where's Clark Kent? You know where he is. In the storeroom. Where else? He's in the storeroom in changing, the store changing once again. It's time for, it's time to write the deadline. He's got to file his copy. And what does he do? He goes to the storeroom. Goes to the storeroom where, of course, you store stuff like that. Uh, although, again, I will never, ever understand why none of these people could pick up on the fact that he was Superman. They worked in a freaking newspaper. I mean, if you worked at the White House for the blind, you probably could have picked up the fact that just by his uh, his tonal inflection in his voice. Yeah, you know, Superman, it's funny, but you remind me of somebody, and I cannot put my finger on it. It's been years, and this is this is Lois telling him. Yeah. I, I, we, it's so interesting, and I just can't put my finger on it but you look like i well i don't know i just can't how, say and how come you uh you, you always say you're gonna you're you know taking public transportation home but yet it takes you uh less than half a second to get home and you're always taking off your glasses and then i never see the next scene and then pshh. oh superman you know he loosens his tie takes off his glasses in one move and that's all you see cut then, pew. yeah, and if nothing else, uh, Clark, we haven't had a phone booth at the Daily Planet or within 10 blocks of it. Why can't anybody get a call in around here? You're always uh, in the phone booth, yeah, for the longest time. Yet, you seem to always be looking for a phone booth, and not only that, but this bulky suit that you wear every place. Why, why don't you get a suit that's cut to your actual dimensions? What are, you, what are you wearing under there that's so important? You know what it's like to have a cape down the, down the back of your trousers all day it ain't long? Easy. It ain't easy. 
and it and, comes out and, all wrinkled, it won't fly and, right. And the question that most people are going to ask, I think, is how in the world do you not get that thing dirty when you, you know, unless you don't. Yeah, I know. There's a lot of unanswered questions because there's no zip. There's no zipper. How the hell do you get into that and get out of it when you're in a hurry? Well, I always thought there was a zip. I don't know if it was a zip, but was some kind of mechanism in there where he would compress his Clark Kent clothes, put them in that pouch, but yet the, the, the cape would wave freely. How, how did you make that happen? Now, that's a good question. Did When Superman changes out of his clothes at the Daily Planet and flies to the place where there's trouble and sees that everything is all right, and then, then it's time for him not to be Superman anymore, he's got to fly back to the closet at the Daily Planet to get his clothes. And the janitor has been in there because it's a storeroom and he sees all the stuff which he threw out. Put it, he put it in the trash bin behind the Daily Planet in the alleyway, Clark Kent Alley. And Clark had to go back there and find his clothes and his bulky gray suit that he wears everywhere was a mess. Coffee grounds and garbage from the, the break room, the jock lounge. Yeah. It, didn't, it wasn't a good look. It took him all afternoon to clean it, even with his superpowers. A couple of 7-Eleven um, hot dog wrappers. Yeah, the, the, end, the end of a whoopee cushion or whatever. Yeah, you, you I mean, find it's, it. uh, there's a lot going on there. So I've, I've never been able So it, it leads me to never trust anything that the planet prints. Uh, because no. if they can't figure that out. <laughs> yeah, how they, where's their investigative reporter? How, yeah, how do you figure out, uh, you know, Professor Pepperwinkle? Well, you know, half the stories are written by Jimmy, so that'll give you some idea about the news. <laughs> the news at the damn Daily Planet. Jimmy Olsen, get a, give me, just give me anybody. But don't yeah, give me Jimmy Olsen. It's not you, great Caesar's ghost. Yeah. <laughs> And Perry White was was consternated and, and mystified and angry and at his wit's end, but he never did a damn day's work in his life. He just stomps around in his office, never made a decision, never hired anybody, never asked where Superman came from, never oh, asked. Oh, he hired somebody. He hired that guy uh, that was the foil of the bank robbery, remember? Uh, I mean, you're not as into it as I am, but there was an episode, and I'm talking about now, of course, the television show. Uh, there was an episode where this guy was uh, doing up a, a string thing in his fingers, and he was standing in front of the Metropolis First National Bank, and uh, this other guy came out brandishing a gun after he robbed the bank, and what, what the, the guy, the, the finger guy, just um, kind of tied him up in his, in his fingers. The cops came, and he was lauded as a hero and not long after that um uh, was employed was hired by perry white at twice what he was making at the accounting company at a feat as a features writer man bites dog that's your job go out and score another story today yeah no, no hey, what do you call what do you call that with the with the, the strings the, the strings on the fingers what, what's that called not lazy susan but uh cat, cat, well i know what a, what a yo -yo. cat's cradle that's it cradle cat. Cats, there you go. Thank yeah. you. Uh, cat's cradle, yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. Which I could never do. I don't know about you, but I could never. Hey, try to get a cat to sit in the cradle. Go on. Try it, try it at home right now. Get your cradle out and put the cat in it. See how long that lasts. That ain't going to work. No. They're very, that's when the claws come out. And they have four of them. They have one of them. They have a claw at the end of each leg, apparently. And, so it, it's and a new design thing. It's no efficient. fear of losing them. No, no, they'll go another <laughs> one back. You'll never see a cat go, oops, I broke a nail. They will just move to the other three nails off the floor. Yeah. <laughs> or, or say, you know what? I realize that you're the one that feeds me every day, so I'm not going to scratch you. Ha. Huh. Yeah. If you believe, if you believe that, if you believe second. that again. Yeah. But mess with me enough, and I will get you. I can make it happen. Oh, Mikey, Mikey, Mikey. Beer, babes, and baseball. Well, all of those things are going to be happening. I don't know what it's going to be like for you to have to suffer through the de designated hitter. But um, what I what I want is just a clean season without any nonsense. And well, when when has that wonder, ever happened? And I wonder what baseball will be like during wartime. That's. Um... I think that's a very big question. 
if we are actually in a shooting war with the Soviet Union, will you, oh, I keep saying the Soviet Union, I mean Russia, sorry. Uh, will you, will you be able to play baseball? Or will you be uh, contributing to the national band uh, by lighting up your stadiums at night? Will they go to a, a you know, will people have the time uh, and the money to go to a baseball game? And what about the idea of a draft? We're going to need, if, if, we, if we could have to go to war against the Soviet Union, I'm sorry, Russia, now you got me doing it. What do we, what do we, what do we think we're going to go to a war with? Well, yeah. Last, last, I, last, last time we had a war where 50,000 Americans died, we had a draft. Yeah, well, we actually had one before that, but we, you know, people generally went into it with um, a feeling of patriotism, a feeling of let's get them before they get up, you know, all the things that were attendant to oh, that. Yeah. Now, uh, this, you know, I, I can't imagine that 50% of America is going to say rah, rah, sis, boom, ba, especially uh, because there's a, uh, there's a, a a ton of jobs out there. I think I think you and I should be working for Voice of America during wartime. We should be sitting in the Mikey and Benny show, the Mikey and Benny all night show broadcast into Russia and Ukraine. I'm just trying to think of, um, will they have to do a lottery again? Will we go back to that whole system where we... Uh, First, it'll be voluntary. But for, sat around no radio and... You know, they don't re no one's registered anymore, Vinny. You used to have to register when you were 18. No, I think you still do. I think you still are supposed to register, aren't you? I don't know about that. Uh, I thought that you were, at least were supposed to uh, let them know that you were 18. And, and uh, I'm going to look it up right now. It may have expired. And I didn't pay attention to it because... Hell no, I'm not going. Uh, well, you, you would in the Ukraine. You're not old enough to stay home. Well, uh, let's see. Who must almost all men ages 18 to 25 who are U.S. citizens or are immigrants living in the United States are required to register with the Selective Service. You must do it. Citizens must within 30 days of turning 18. Well, I did not now, know that. I wonder if they changed that. It just made me think of something. Is it just men? Or Good do point. women? Because in the, in the volunteer army, which is volunteer Marines, volunteer Air Force, volunteer everything that we're dealing with right now, anybody can join, man or woman. Yeah, I'm not looking, I'm not seeing a woman anywhere. I'm only seeing a man must register. Register for the, for conscription, for yeah. the draft. So well, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about the type of war where everybody gets involved, where you and I would have a duty. You and I would have a, a place in uh, communications or propaganda. I would, uh, I would be more than okay with that. I would, I would be fine with that. Yeah, I would do whatever it took to, um, whatever I could, could do um, to help uh, people in Ukraine and to support our troops, I would do. It's this called su supporting the war effort in any way. Yeah, out of, out of all of the um, silly things that we've done uh, since the end of World War II, this is... Um, this, this is not, this, this is, this is this, yeah, it's not silly. It's many things, but it's not yeah, silly. Yeah, this is, uh, we're, we're, we are coming to the defense of a bully, uh, to the defense of, a, of, of somebody who is being picked on by a bully. And you can't have that. And he has designs on the rest of Europe. He wants to destruct. Well, he, he, he may have designs on the rest of the world for all we know. He may just be uh, his uh, syphilis addled brain uh, may just be uh, adult enough. Um, when I say adult, I always picture like like a, 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 a 30 day old avocado sitting on a table. 
oh dear, it shouldn't be sitting there anymore. That should be thrown out. It kind of looks like what a, you know, shrunk yep. in and dry. And But that's what I'm thinking an adult brain would look like. Well, people are of the opinion that Putin is not playing with a full deck, but he's playing with a powerful deck. And that's yeah. the that's the problem. He has he has the ability, even in his dotage and his insanity, to do terrible things. And uh, he hasn't done them yet. It seems to me. He's doing he, them, but he's not finished yet. Right. He's got the power to do. And unfortunately, the backing of more people than he should, uh, sincerely, because. He is, um, you know, he he's the head of state. He's, you know, these people. And he has a propaganda machine that continues to tell people back in Russia. Everything's okie doke. We have to we have to eliminate these people. We have to get them. We have to do what we can do to them because they're coming for us. We're not going, we didn't go looking for this war. We didn't even start this. We didn't even want this. It's the Ukrainians. They did it. Yeah. And uh, it's an attack on Mother Russia. He's not even selling them the whole, trying to sell them the whole. No. You know, uh, Russia must be great again. Russia must do this again. Russia must do that again. It's not even in that ballpark. No, it's a special military uh, operation. Yeah, we, we have to find these people because they want to kill us. They're coming for us. Fight them now or fight them later. Yeah. And uh, he... <laughs> You know, it's funny. It's, in some ways, he's using the reverse domino theory. Yes. Well, he, 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 what he's using is the theory that Donald Trump used so well, and that is just lie about it. And it doesn't matter what it is. Lie about it today, lie about it tomorrow, keep lying about it, and always lie about it. And that's, that's all you have to do. It's a simple theory. Never tell the truth. Yeah. They're, they're, uh, it's called the Knickerbocker strategy. How does that work? Lies. Lies, you're telling me Tell that me you'll, be you'll be true. true. <laughs> I love that song. Yeah, it's a great song, isn't it? It's all I ever get from you. Someday I'm going to be lonely. <laughs> oh, man. Some, you know, something came up with music and I thought of you and I can't think of what I'll, I'm not going to get it. Oh, I do see in my notes. Did you see Saturday Night Live? Yes, I did. The commercial about just go on, take it. This is a damn trap. Yep. <laughs> the, the, the best one they've done it was done so well that even at the beginning of it i go well this can't be the commercial this must be the commercial before the bit they they crank they, out some uh they crank out some good stuff when especially when they do those recorded commercials i'm starting yeah. to shower on the writers a little bit well they've they have great they have great world shaking events they sh and they're not able to write to that level when oh, they do their cold oh, open oh. Oh, no, I'm, I'm talking about that sketch that they do. It now seems to be a weekly thing where they have the writer's um, room and somebody comes into the room and, uh, you know, they do something with that person. Um, I don't know. It, 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 I, I liked it for the first few weeks, but now it seems to be. It's like Dean Martin opening the door not knowing who's going to be on the other side. Yeah, yeah. But it's, it's got to it, be funny. Yeah. You know, that, that was a great bit. As a matter of fact, that whole show, it. I mean, I go back and I look at those every once in a while, the old Dean Martin shows. And I mean, they were, they were really well done. Uh, you, you know, the, uh, I, it always made you feel like you were in a club. And it'd be funny if he opened that door sometime and didn't know who the person was. Who's this? Right. Who the hell is this? Right. And it, it, and it usually wasn't somebody who was on the show. So it was an no, extra right. added treat. You know, you could open that door and Frank could be there or Jimmy yeah. or Sammy or... Just a cameo. Just somebody, yeah. And, and, and they'd come and they'd drop in there two minutes or whatever they were doing. And they'd go away again. It was great. I mean, once in a while they sang a song, but I don't know if they kept even too many people around to sing a song. No. He just kind of got in got out and it was well written it was great time and you were looking at some of the greatest uh, actors or comedians of all time um and it has a great effect on the audience of anticipation who's behind the door yeah who's behind the, it's a silly thing but who's behind the door yeah and it, it really works yeah it was uh, i always thought it was that was just such a great little something to throw in there you know um 
just my two cents worth on the. Uh, and you don't have to say anything. It's a visual. You open the door, applause. Yeah, I mean, you could you could play it both ways. I don't know if they ever did it, but I would have loved to have seen Marcel Marceau. Oh yeah, that'd on, be great. on that would it be kind of would it be kind of funny? Um, and I know he was, well, he did something like that on um, Jack Bishop. Joey Bishop. Uh, no, 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 uh, Red Skelton. Excuse me. Where he, you know, Red used to have that guest each week that would come out and do something. Um, Marcel didn't sing a song. So he, mime, he would mime the song. <laughs> my, my way. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I never thought of it, but that'd be a good way to make some quick cash. Just go out and buy. Uh, Marcel you know, Marceau's greatest hits. Yeah, Marcel Marceau's greatest hits. And just boom. Put them in a sleeve, send them out. <laughs> now, for 1995, America's greatest musical personality that you've never heard. <laughs> Hear them in a way that you've never heard them before. <laughs> this Mother's Brothers sing Silent Night, but silently. It's a silent but, uh, version. It's a very silent, it's a wonderful record. And we'll include that uh, for just $14.95 shipping and handling with your order. Send it to Warner Special Products. I can't hear a thing. Burbank, California. Yes, just right here on, uh, what's their, um, what's capital, 1690, is it, or something like that, I forget. Uh, it's on Vine. Vine, yeah. I Hollywood, think Hollywood and Vine is the address on the... Yeah, it, yeah. I remember I used to know like the addresses of. It's a weird, quirky thing. I used to know like all the addresses of all the insurance, uh, uh, of all the uh, record companies. And it's on Vine. Yeah, like, yeah. One, one half block above Hollywood. Yeah, it was, yeah. Oh, Mikey. So, what, what do you think Wednesday? How do you think the war will end, Mikey? <laughs> <laughs> I hate to say it, but that's the question that they ask everybody who comes on a show. How do you see an ending? The funny if thing I is, see how an ending, I buy stock in something. They would have to find a way to to cut off their their, their breakfast, cut off the gas, cut off the food, cut off the uh, supplies, and the war will be over. Now, that's the shooting part would be over because they're unable to continue it. But that doesn't mean that the hostilities will be over. And, and until that they get in their trucks and drive out of Ukraine, it won't be over. And then what are you going to do about the separatist held areas in the east and the Crimea? Do they, do they revert to the old Ukraine as well? They should. And will it turn into a war of uh, terrorism? Yeah. Will you be in a, now in a place where you can't walk down the street without worrying about a bomb going off or something? You, exactly. Ukrainian what cartels. What it's going to be replaced with? Uh, yeah, it's not a, it's 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 not an easy situation, Michael, in any shape, matter, or form. Um, and uh, as I do every night, I pray uh, for the people of Ukraine. And so, at some point here, cooler heads will prevail. And these people can start. I think this is going to be an interesting week of, per, of the prelude to further action because Zelensky is talking to the Congress in a joint session on Wednesday. That promises to be an emotional time. And then, of course, he will have his say when he's done. The senators and representatives will go to searching for cameras so they can have they, their say. Yeah. And then it's then and that that's all interesting and it's to be taken into consideration. But Biden can't do anything until he has a full agreement with the 30 nations of NATO for them to do their thing. Because if we if this war happens, it's going to be on their doorstep, not ours. And that means that stable economies like France and Germany and Hungary and Italy are going to be exposed to the violent front of, of Russia. Right. And 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 that changes the world as we know it. And you, at this time, and I don't think that I'm saying anything that anybody doesn't know, uh, you cannot afford to have cracks in your um, alliance, in your alliance, in your, in, in your front. No. Uh, you, you have to continue. One of the things I think that is helping uh, uh, make Putin think twice about 
some of the things that he's doing, not all of them, is the fact that he's not just going to P.O. the United States, uh, but at some point here, um, he might really, you know, get himself involved in a world war. And that is something that I don't care what he looks like or what he says. Uh, I, I, I can't imagine he wants that as, you know, as much as people say that he wants it. I think he thought that this would be an easy romp for him to, you know, take him about 15 minutes to take it over. Don't worry, Don, I'll be home for dinner. That's what the generals told him. Yeah, well, you know, uh, as we have learned here in the United States, don't trust your generals. No. What a general is really good for is getting his stars retiring and then working for NBC or CBS. That's, yeah, what a, that's, I, a, that's a good general. He can't kill I, anybody else. Yeah, they have an army of generals working for a CNN. Yeah, no, he's, but, he's general. And, B <laughs> and the and the, and the lady on the weekends goes, "Hi, General." That's the way she introduces him, which I thought was sounded just like a a, a line from a Mel Brooks movie. <laughs> is that um Pamela Brown or is yes, it my God, Pamela Brown was so out of her depth this weekend. Oh, uh, really? Yes, I like her, but yeah, she. Yeah, they're um CNN is is. Hi, General. Yeah, the CNN sometimes can be weak on the weekend. Yeah. Um, I, you know, sometimes you'll get lucky. I'll have uh, uh, Jim Shudo or, or a couple of the other, you know, stars that people that know Wolf, what they're Wolf, talking Wolf, about. Wolf Blitzer and uh, Anderson Cooper both work the weekend. Yeah, yeah, I would think right now that they're, uh, that they're doing it. But uh, a lot of times... They don't, uh, you know, the, the weekend, uh, Frederica Whitfield mm -hmm. is painfully. Um, she's better off with happy talk. Yeah, yeah. She, she's, uh, she's, uh, I mean, she should be a weather, uh, you know, a weatherhead, you know, I mean, or, or an entertainment reporter or something like that. There isn't any, there of, isn't any seriousness or grabby toss there. Yeah, yeah, there's, yeah. There's, uh, I mean, we we make fun of things here at times, but you know, I I think we do a better job than she does. Well, we explain the Spolpakian theory and all the borders and the highways and the, their trade gaps and their their military stance, and we we I think we put it in the, into uh, focus is why Spolpaki is not a member of NATO. Why? Oh, <laughs> the Spopakians. It, it, it just all traces back to Spopakians. I think we I think we should immediately, immediately apply for membership. Uh, can you do that online or do you have to? Um... The paperwork is a bitch. It's just so much. I don't think Spokapia is up to it. Yeah. yeah my, you know why? I have to get a computer out of there right now. It's the Spopakians. That's why. That's why Spol That's why Spopaki is in so much trouble. Spopakians. Oh, Mikey, Mikey, Mikey. The world is in trouble right now. And hopefully by the time we get back together on Wednesday morning at uh, 1010, it'll be in less trouble than it is today. But to be honest with you, I don't see that, Mikey. This is this is going to be a week of change. And we'll see if, the, if, if uh, Zelensky is addressed to the United States joint session of uh, Congress, will produce anything besides stand-up commentary. Well, and plus he'll get to see a lot of his old friends when he's, uh, you know, now he's not coming here, obviously. Um, no, but, but Biden, Biden might go to Europe. That's, yeah, I saw that, that, that Biden's talking about going. And I think Zelensky should make it a point to say hello to some of his, uh, his old buddies. Uh, yeah. I want, I, want, administration. I, want to, I want to thank all you people for sending Donald Trump over here and Rudy Giuliani and all those idiots. Thanks so much for that. That helped. Yeah, I wonder if... Uh, I wonder if maybe they'll do have all of them lined up in just one row so they could all stand up and and Jim Jordan can yell, you're a thug. <laughs> Boy, he's been strangely silent lately. Maybe he's got the uh, the pox. Yeah, maybe he's got two or three uh, young men stuffed under his table somewhere. Stuffed? Oh, my God. Yeah, just well, those desks don't appear to be that big. I believe they were built before men were men, and you know, 
<laughs> I got to tell you the rest of it then. And then I can't, I, I can't help you anyway. Send the beer man over here. Send, send the beer guy. I'll wear that one next week. Send the beer, <laughs> send the beer guy. All right, Mikey, let's, okay, uh, let's, let's relax. Do. Let's uh, get ready uh, for Wednesday's uh, show that will get you over the hump, over the bump, and uh, over whatever else that you need to get over. The sump yeah. pump. Yeah, the sump pump, yeah. A lot of that going on around, around uh, Spopakia right now. <laughs> sump pump parts are, uh, are going. Hard to come by. Literally, we got, we got all the sump pump parts, but we can't get to the sump pump gaskets, and so the pump doesn't work. Uh, you can use rubber bands, Permatex. Oh, Permatex, it's like stuff that you would put on a um car engine to bind uh, the, the gasket to the car engine so it doesn't move when you put any other piece in it needs to have a gasket between it do i need do i need a whole family of products to get to install this you don't need them but there are products that will make it easier for you to do it permatex bill swift here no that's uh that's a different <laughs> that's a different thing and as i've told you i wouldn't rely on phil swift for anything to work Okay, then. See you Wednesday. Have a good day. Mikey, have a good one. Catch up with you if the Lord's will and the creek don't rise on Wednesday. Uh, remember the people in Ukraine. Peace, love, and Manischewitz, baby. What a wine. See you, Mikey. See you, Ben.